they knew how to do yeah. was to repent. Yeah. Come on. He knew because he said, again, we don't need God. Yeah. See, a lot of times we forget that. Come yeah. on. You know, we try to, when we do stuff, we try to do stuff just to please the pastors. We try to do stuff to please our family. Come on. Come on. You know, even if we're sinning, we oh, okay. You know, we try to fake for them. Give God. 
God of praise. Come on, come on. Come on. I, I, that's something I have to learn. It's not about how I'm feeling. Come on. It's never about how yeah. I am feeling. Never, never. You know, I get up many times, you get up, your ankle is hurting, your back is hurting, your neck is hurting. But there's a lot of people not here today. Yeah. And if God sees fit to wake you up, you never come into his house and yeah. charge him yeah. Yeah. Come on. Never come into his house without giving him a praise. You know, the Bible tells you, enter into his gate. Yeah. See, we know the scriptures. Yeah. Now you don't know what? Except keep in 
my eyes on God. That's right. Yes. I looked at everything. Uh, and then things started to happen. And I went back out there and started acting foolish. Mm -hmm. And I came back. But when I came back to church, yeah. I had a crisis. Mm -hmm. When I walked through the doors, I started seeing everything wrong. Uh, yeah. 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 This brother doing this. Why is this sister doing Come this? On. Then, to be honest, you know, I noticed this for a short time. 
Right. You know, I can stick through that and keep moving on. Amen. And I have Jesus, why I find a church. I find a church everywhere I go because I know I needed to be saved. Amen. Some of us seem to sit at home and listen to the pastor all the time over there. And I understand some people are away. And thank you for joining us. Amen. You know, you're getting the word. But for those that can't come out, how, don't you feel in the mornings to get up? You know, you take a nice shower. You put on some nice clothes. Yeah. That it starts from there. Yeah. You know, like when you used to be in the club and you're getting all excited because you already buy a new outfit. You know, you got new shoes, and you know that you're going to look good, yeah. and you have that excitement before you even get into the club. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So why are we trying to get God halfway? You start getting it together. You start singing in the morning. You know, I have this thing that I start after I read my little dirty words and stuff. You know, I start singing different songs. And so when I come in, I'm coming in with that joy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm coming in with an expectation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us come in and you think, okay, the pastor is preaching every day. Mm. That's, that's right. Well, what did you do before you got here? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, what did you do before you got here? You know, the praise team is singing, and you mean to tell me none of the words prick your heart? Mm -hmm. How have we become so dry? Uh -huh. Okay. Praise is what I do. Uh, when I want to be close to you. Yeah. You know, praise is what I do when I want to be close. Nothing about that pricks anything in your heart. Uh, what happened to the weeping and wailing? Praise. Uh -oh. What happened when the Holy Ghost convicts you? Have you been turned over to a reprobate mind? Uh -huh. mm. That nothing pricks your heart anymore? Oh, yeah. You know when you say something to a brother or a sister, don't that bother you to the point where you got to go back on that threshing floor and say, God, how help me? Show me what to do. You know, getting back to this, I remember one time um, I had done something to a sister which I know I shouldn't have, and it bothered me. And I said, God, you know, she cost me. You know how we always work stuff out. Yeah. You know, if she didn't do this, I wouldn't have done this. Come on, preach, be preaching. And God said to me, every time I saw her, ah, the hairs in the back of my neck stood up. I was like, oh God, I can't do this. I can't sit in church and be under this car and not say something. Mm. It bothered my spirit. And I, well, I, didn't, I didn't ask that. I didn't go to God and pray and ask him to guide me when I go to I just sat down here. Go, go. I walked up to her and I said, well, please forgive me. And she was a little disappointed. <laughs> and I went back to God. I said, Lord, I know I should have laid before you and let you guide me how to approach this lady. That's it. Right there. Because the way I approached her, I don't know if she was still upset or the way I approached this walk to her. I said, I just want to talk to you. I want you to forgive me for whatever I've done. Because, you know, it bothered my spirit. So I think I was trying to just get near her. You. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It had nothing to do with her. You told her. You preached. And even though she was a Christian, she could have turned around and said, I understand, sis, but no, you would walk away. Mm -hmm. So that told me I had to go back on my threshing floor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I had to lay before God and say, God, I want to love this sister. I don't want to be mad every time I see her. Yeah. And God said, To this day, I try to live by that. Yeah. I want God to see me as somebody that's trying to make it easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I'm going to make mistakes. Come on. You know, I try not to make too many. Yeah. But I know that sometimes, you know, I, I get angry, I try not to sin, I do all this stuff. But I want God to be able to forgive me. Yeah. 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 So when I see people now, whether they Say something to me or whatever. I try to see them as a child of God trying yeah. to make it. Yeah. If we should look at our brothers and our sisters, just look at them as children of God trying to make it. Yeah. This sister might come.
don't even look at anyone. You don't know what she went through. Mm. She might look tired. You don't know what she went through. But if God sold you, look across the sky at her. Stop for a minute and say, God, I'm praying for my sister. My Lord, my Lord. You know, she looks tired to me. God, strengthen her. Yes, yes. Help her to let her eyes look towards the Lord. Mm. That's it. Threshing floor as the place where David went to build an altar yeah. because he had to stop the plague. That's what Israel did for going on the threshing floor. But as we continue to search the scripture, we would read in 2 Samuel, I want to say this, it was a place for forgiveness and sacrifice. Uh -huh. That's where that threshing floor. Now, you know I can't speak about the threshing floor without speaking about Ruth. <laughs> we all know about Ruth and Boaz and how she went out. And, but where did Ruth find Boaz? On the threshing floor. Now, we could invite him over to the house and introduce him to her daughter-in-law. And tell her she's a fine woman. Look at her. You know she didn't cook. She didn't clean. You know how we do it these days? Mm. Or she could have went on the internet. And I know they didn't have internet in that time. I'm just using that. Mm. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. And she could have looked him up. Yes. And Boaz could have came up. Mm. And they could have started hiking and jogging, talking and chatting. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or she could have just, Naomi could have just said, well, look here, I want you to get all dressed up and go to his home. Mm. You know, y'all have a conversation. But Naomi said, you meet him on the threshing floor. Mm -hmm. Where was Boaz? On the threshing floor. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us don't understand the significance of that floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, for Ruth, the threshing floor was her new beginning. Uh -huh. Come on. For Samuel, it was forgiveness and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Also in Genesis, we speak of Joseph. You know, Genesis 50, and for the, for the sake of time, you know, I'm going to just go through, I'm just going to read the scriptures, and you can use it in the time of study. And Genesis 50, for Joseph, when his father Jacob died, he asked Pharaoh, could he go and mourn his son? He mourned him on the threshing floor. Yeah, yeah. So we see here the threshing floor was a place of forgiveness and sacrifice. Yeah. It was a place of new beginning. Yeah. It could be a place of mourning. Uh, so the threshing floor can be used for whatever you need. Whatever you need to separate the good from the bad. Good. To start over. Get a new beginning. In Numbers 18 and 27, it was a place of plentiful harvest. Because once that shaft, when they got the harvest in, and they came to the threshing floor, and the shaft got blown away, then the grain was so plentiful. Mm -hmm. You know, we always hear the story of God refined me until I come out as gold. Mm -hmm. You know, the gold has to go through this process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to go through the come process? On, yeah. Yeah. Are you willing to go through the process? And I'm talking here to, I'm talking to saved mm -hmm. Christians yes. right now. Yes. When last laid on the threshing floor? Mm -hmm. Or have you got to the point mm -hmm. where you think everything is looking good for me now? Mm -hmm. Everything is good. God, you want me to live in abundance? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm reaping the fruit. I have a good job. You know? My children are doing fine. Everybody's well. I don't need the threshing floor anymore. Mm -hmm. Come on. But then remember the thing called world where there's always something for you to lay out and pray for. Come on. Okay, if God delivered you to the point where your children are doing fine, where everyone around you is doing fine, then look at the world. Yes. Look at the people on your job. Mm -hmm. There's always something for you to pray for. Yes. Where are the prophets of this nation? Yes. Are we seeking God? Mm -hmm. Are we asking God to 
sure of what is the next step? Are we laying out before God and confessing every single thing? And I don't know why we're so scared of confessing to God, because he already knows. Yeah. 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 But I think when you say stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. then you really got to deal with it. Yeah. Come on, come on. And that's where we get scared. Yeah. 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 You know, we were out there confessing to be saved or confessing to be Christians, but yet we're going out there to the bar and we're drinking. So we scared to go lay on the treasure floor and say, God, help me with this drinking problem. Come on, come on, you help me right now. Okay? God, help me with trying to date. I profess to be a Christian, but I'm trying to date every man I see. God, help me with this problem. Or have you become so complacent when you think everything is okay? You don't want to confess your sins? God, I see that I, as the head of the home. I'm not loving my wife like you said. I should love the church. You know, but God, help me. How do I love this woman? Help me. Mm. I can't do this by myself. Amen. I can't do this by myself. You know, we hear about all the, you know, you hear about the black person, you hear about all these people out there, how they're making so much money. You're like, man, they're living the life. Yeah. But you sit down and watch some of the interviews. Yeah. Come on. You watch some of those wives' interviews, how they cry. Yeah. Yeah. And they had to forgive. Yeah. And they had to go through. We as Christians, mm -hmm. right. it's hard for us to forgive. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us to, you know, you're going to remember. Yeah. But when you forgive somebody, it has to come from you. Yeah. That's right. You've got to be able, when you see that person, just to them as a child of God trying to make it in. Yeah. So, in Jeremiah 51, mm -hmm. they talked about the daughter of Babylon. When we hear about Babylon, the first thing we need sin. Yes, that's what it's talking about. And it says Babylon as the threshing floor mm -hmm. because that was the place where they needed to be beaten Separated, shredded, God is going to destroy them. Yeah. Do we want to be destroyed? Mm -hmm. Destruction don't come in the places a lot of times that we think we need to see. Look at your life. Mm -hmm. Saints, let's take a minute and examine ourselves. Yeah. You got up this morning, you came in here. Some of us, we had to deal with the COVID. God brought us through. Yes. Yes. How many people didn't? Come on. Okay, how many people didn't come through? Yeah. You know, some of us had different procedures done. God brought us through. Yes. How many people went through that yes. same thing? Come on. Yeah. That same procedure. Yes. And they didn't make it. And they didn't make it. Yes. You know, the story is told about 50 cents with all those gunshot wounds. Mm -hmm. And you made it through. Yeah. We know that one bullet mm -hmm. takes a lot of people out. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. one. one. Breath, you don't die from a sickness. You die when God takes your breath out of your body. Yeah. Because if that was the case, how many people live with that same thing? How many people overcome that same illness? Thank you. Thank you. But when God takes his breath out of your body, yeah. the body's going to make it. Yeah. Do you want to keep living this life to have to live, to live again? Yeah. Or you want to go through this life carrying all the extra, the shaft, carrying the grain, trying to mix it together and just become tired and weary? Uh -huh. Today, I'm trying to encourage you to lay out on the threshing floor. Oh, yeah. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. Be honest before God. He said that you have to confess this with your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. This thing don't come by osmosis. Come on. And it'll come by God, you know it all. Come on. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But you have to confess yeah. this thing. Yeah. God is asking us today. Go back and lay down before 
before me. Lay in all your nakedness before me. I am here. I will forgive you. I died on the cross for you. Don't ever forget that. If things are not going the way that you want to go, you want it to go, if you're not seeing things in your life and you're tired and you're weary, tell God this. Get on that threshing floor and lay back and say, God, I'm tired. God, I am weary. I'm trying to do all this stuff, but it's not working. It's not working for me. I don't have no joy. I don't have no peace. You know, I get up in the morning, and let me tell you something, not no joy and no peace would eventually affect your health. That stress is no joke. You know, a lot of us, and, and, and that's one of the things, a lot of church folks, and I, we have all this high blood pressure, and we have all this stuff. We have got to learn how to lay this stuff at Jesus' feet. We have got to learn how to lay it up on the threshing floor and say, God, you take it. It's your all on the altar. A sacrifice for me. It's your heart that's the spirit control. You can only, ah, my God, only be blessed and have peace and sweetness. Don't hinge on old men. You know what I'm talking about. Get you weary. But it's so Lay it all on the altar to the Lord. Lay it all. A lot of people come and say, okay, pray and ask God and it's just going to go away. Some things only come by prayer. Uh -huh. The Bible could have left that out. Uh -huh. But God was trying to give us instructions. Yeah. You know, how many of us read the Bible for ourselves or we just get a little bit on Sunday and we get a little bit on Wednesday? Mm -hmm. And then that's enough. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many, I was when I was studying, you know, the great word, I was looking through, I went to Barnes and Noble, I was sitting there and I was going through, and I said, all these two devotional <laughs> It was so many. Yeah. All of them, were, they were compact, but you could read them in a year. I said, look at that. Uh -huh. And I opened up one, and it was only three chapters a day. And you finish the Bible in a year. Mm -hmm. So that you'd be able to go through everything. Mm -hmm. The whole word, the book of instructions. I said, it is so easy. You know, back when I was growing up, you didn't have all these Bibles. Uh -huh. You had the Holy Bible. Happened off you at the hotels or, or where you come. Uh, That's all you had was a little pocket Bible that those right. missionaries made sure you had. I remember every time you go to church, somebody give you one. Uh, you know, that's all we had. And those Bibles were so small, you had to sit there and try to look through and read them. And all they got the big ones, they got small, you could get on your phone. I mean, it is so easy, saints. Yeah. But reading the Bible is not easy. Uh, you need that intimacy. God to say, I need you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sunday after Sunday, you want to get up and come to church and do all this stuff and help in church and, and, and do everything. But at the end of the road, you say, depart from me. Mm -hmm. You know, if, and this, this is a repeat from someone I heard said, if you want to go to hell, go in a limousine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was, go out there and do whatever you want to do. Get money, do, do whatever. And if you die, you go to hell. But you want to come to church, try to live right, try to tell someone about God and his goodness. Many a days, and, and when you serve God, sometimes you have this burden on your heart for people. You know, you see someone, and, and you're like, God, what is it that you're saying to me? You know, you have to go talk to that person. People will try to persecute you because you, you, you professing to be saved. You know, they don't want to be around you because they think you are goody two shoes. Mm. Or in their minds, because you say it, you're not going to love them. You have to go through all of this at the end of the road to hear, depart from me mm. because you didn't take the time to really do who God is, mm. what God does, mm. and how God does. Mm. Take the time and get on that threshing floor where God will be able to separate, separate you. Separate
literally all the hump that is filled up in me. So today, I encourage you to confess your sins before God. Confess what it is that is making you tired. Confess what it is that's making you weary. Confess what it is that's taking your joy, that's taking your peace. It was those family members that you, you, you so worried about day in, day out, yeah. that you have no time. You get up in the morning and the phone starts to ring until it's time for you to go back to bed. And by the end of the day, you say, God, I didn't get to spend no time with you, but I've talked to 25 people all day. Oh. I had to pour for them because I remember that people would call me so much and I would get there and I would start to run my mouth. And you're just talking and talking and talking and somebody else calling you, talking and talking and talking. And before you know it, I had to spend any time with God. Mm -hmm. They draw everything out of you, but you didn't get a chance to have anything to put back into it. You stay at home on Sundays and you try to look at them, but guess what? Put the computer in your bed mm -hmm. and you fall asleep. Uh, and I'm saying that because guess what my mom does? <laughs> I went to New York. You said, I'm not going back to that church. Because every time I go, I hear somebody else got COVID. And I'm like, what? I'm not trying to get COVID. So my sister, we try to set up the computer. I walk in the room. She's not even going, okay? She will fast. I said, why did I just get so missed? I can hear her story in the living room. Because I went over to the living room so that she could have you know, her time and her, her church. I mean, don't sleep and slumber on this day. Come on, come on. You become too complacent. You know, you hear the pastor say, you know, go out, speak to someone, and we think, oh, he's not talking to me. When last did you tell somebody that Jesus is good enough? When last did you tell somebody that God died for them? When last did they look at you and wanted what you had? Mm. Or are you so comfortable that everything is me? I got time. You got to fight to get yours. That's how we used to speak in the world. That is not what God called us to do. He said, go yeah. into all of the world. You know, you don't have to stand behind a pulpit and preach. Amen. And that's the thing we always go to pulpit time. saw someone that was down and out. And just a little word from him, a word of encouragement, he lifted his spirit. See, saints, this is the thing. And I hope I'm not mashing any feelings. We know when we got prayed up. God gives his people his own. running to church and just dragging on your last leg, you're afraid all week, and you come in, and especially for us that have to stand before God, Amen. you have to stand, I'm talking about people in the choir, people in the praise team, you know, the ushers in the door, you know all of that, because that's where it starts, it starts from that parking lot, you smile when you see people, have you ever went somewhere and the ushers look so rude, that you think to yourself, I just turn around. <laughs> before you even got into the ministry. Yeah. And then you come in and you sit down. You know, the praise team come up, they drive the pot high. Have they been praying before they got here? Come on. We could tell when you're going in from your spirit when you're not, when you're just faking and trying to make it. And we're not knocking that. But we're saying that you're standing in front of, you're standing in front of God's people. Give it your all. Start from home. Lay before yes, God. Yes, Get on your yes, threshing floor yes. and let God know that this is something I need to release. I can't get over mm. being sick and tired. Mm. Actually, as old folks used to say, aren't you sick and tired of being mm. sick and tired? Mm. I remember when there was a time that I would come to church every single Sunday. After Sunday, and I sat there and it was like everything was passing over my head. Going on. I'm not receiving anything. They were singing, I was like, 
Well, uh uh-uh, I can't keep doing this. I can't get up in the morning and be coming to church every time the church door opens. Sunday, Wednesday, you got the five o'clock prayer. Okay, you come to choir practice. You come to women's meeting. Come on. You, you know, every time you're there. But nothing is sticking. By the time you get to the parking lot, if somebody asks you, well, it's next week. <laughs> if some of us remember anything, do a check when you get in your car on Sundays when you leave church. When you get into your car, and if you give it a little five minutes down the road, ask yourself, what was Pastor talking about? Mm. And you'll be surprised that some of us can't remember anything. Mm. Mm. You might remember one word, but what was the food? What was the real thought of his message? Mm. You can't remember that because you were somewhere else. That's right. took it all, the whippings, the beatings, and he even asked for forgiveness for the ones that he's doing it for. He asked for the cup to be passed, but he said, never again. Now, thy will be done. He's calling you. You can't look on Facebook now. You can't look on any place now. Tomorrow, well, the end of the day is going to come. Of course, Jesus said tomorrow is not promised. But the end of the day is not promised. You know, these just a couple of days ago, I lost a friend that was, I went to South Carolina and I was introduced to them and they used to take me to church and go out to eat with him and his wife. They let me stay at their house so I could park the car and go see my mom. Tomorrow is not promised to end tomorrow. Right. Don't put off what you need to do today. Right. Come on. Right. You don't want to wake up mm. and open your eyes and weep. Mm. Or hear, depart from me, I know you. Right. God is saying to you, accept me, Jesus. It is a choice. You know, he will not violate you. Jesus. I love you, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just wanted to say to everyone here in this ministry, God is saying to you, don't put off today. Don't put off for tomorrow what you need to do today. Amen. Some of you need to go back home and maybe pray about it. You know things are not going the way that you have been praying. There seems like a block. Something is blocking your prayers. And you keep saying, Lord, I've been praying for this to happen. But why not? God, why isn't it happening for me? God is saying to you, I need you to come clean with me. I need to be able to clean you from the inside out. I said in my word for you to seek me first. And I will not have you gone. The medium is everything that we be going first. <laughs> Work is the first thing on our minds. You get up in the morning, calling your mom, your dad, everything is the first thing on your mind. God is saying to put me first. Yes, Lord. He's saying to put me first. He is a jealous God. The things that you hold in dear, you don't want God to wipe those away. So you have a chance to fix it. I've said to you since, fix it before it's too late. Place God. Have him first in your life. He's not saying for you not to have another life. But we have built up so many gods before him. You know, Saturday is supposed to be a preparation day for Sunday. That's the day we wash our cars. We're doing everything else. That's getting prepared. God is saying, let me see you. Lay not before me. Let me see you preparing to come before my people. God is saying, put me first. Hallelujah. When you put me first, I will not. Amen. Wash us, O Lord. 